Some Artlantis shaders are of colors only, like these. Because it's a simple shader, you can set only a few parameters like reflection, shininess, or transparency. Even these few parameters are enough to simulate various materials like plastic, chrome, or aluminum. Some other shaders contain an image file with a particular pattern of a material for the diffuse. Completed with additional image maps, these image shaders can represent great finishings composed of resizable tiles, for example, as is the case for this marble surface. The Atlantis catalog contains specific shader families meant to simulate complex surfaces. One of them is the Fresnel shaders family for water or glass surfaces. Fresnel shaders are set up of colors only and have a key parameter, the Fresnel transition slider. For the water, it mixes the transparency of the surface with the reflectiveness. It works the same for the glass surfaces and it's our job to find a good and credible mixture of it. The reflection can be colored and to simulate a thickness for the glass, you can set the appropriate refraction value from the list of presets. In using the diffuse Fresnel shader, the Fresnel slider will mix the colors given to the reflectiveness and diffuse. I select two distinct colors to help you understand the way this slider works. As I drag it to the left, the purple color set for reflection will dominate. By dragging it to the right, the purple is gradually replaced by the orange color of the diffuse. It's an excellent shader to simulate car paint, for example. Another shader family is composed of light emitters, such as the neon light and light plane shaders. The neon light can be applied on surfaces of any shape. Once applied on this lamp, the light power can be adjusted in the inspector as well as the color of the emitted light. I just changed the Heliodon settings to make the effect of the neon light visible in the preview. Use the neon light shader cautiously, however. It's very time consuming when you calculate the final rendering. Atlantis 5 introduces the light plane shader, optimized for plane surfaces. It has a different calculation algorithm compared to the neon light shader, and as a result, the calculation of the final rendering will be 10 times faster with the light plane shader. The light emittive shaders can be set active or not separately for cameras in the perspective inspector, similar to any other camera parameter. There are specific image shaders too, like those equipped with the 3D effect slider. They are meant to simulate surfaces with relief like brick walls with grout or stone walls. In addition to the bump and normal sliders, their inspector contains a particular 3D effect parameter tool. Now its value is zero. As I increase this value, the grout is deepened more and more and the surface becomes more realistic. Combined with the bump and normal parameters, the 3D effect slider is able to give relief to such surfaces without burdening the initial 3D geometry. Another specific image shader family is composed of multiple diffuse maps. They are excellent for lawns and other surfaces where avoiding the repetition effect is critical. In this particular case, the threshold 1 represents the ground with burned out lawn and threshold 2 adds healthy lawn patches to it. The third slider manages the transition between the two. Clicking on the dice, you can reorganize the set amount of patches on the surface at your convenience. Such shaders can represent lawns, different ground types, or water surfaces with pollution patches or algae. Avoiding the repetition effect is imperative in case of several other surfaces too. A parquet shader, for example, set up of a relatively small diffuse image can easily become repetitive, but not in our case. Same with these tiles set to a diffuse of 9 tiles per 9 tiles only. Their distribution on the surface looks seamless, as in the case of the parquet. Among the parameters, we will retrieve the dice. It will help us to reorganize the distribution of the diffuse to find the best combination possible.